G'day fellas, welcome to an Age of Empires 4 video that is very special. Over the next few days, you're going to be seeing a huge amount of content coming out of me and a whole bunch of other creators that have been given a very special early look at the full version of Age of Empires. So on this channel, over the next couple of hours, next couple of days, you're going to see videos popping up constantly in your feed. It's going to be things like Let's Plays, it's going to be things like uh, commentaries of videos that I've or of games that I've played of games that I've recorded of replays that I've watched and first person videos of me playing as well so I want to take you guys on a tour we're going to go through every single landmark for every single civilization and we're going to do every landmark in less than 60 seconds now it's 60 seconds or less I know the title probably says in 60 seconds but We'll, we'll try and do it in 60 seconds or less, all right? That's what we're going to go for. So if you're looking for a specific civilization, I'm going to leave links down in the description to where you can find them. The order that we're going to be doing this is in is the French, then the Rus, then the Mongols, then the Delhi. Now, the reason we're doing those four civs first is because those civilizations are the civs we've seen le the least of. Then we'll be going to the Holy Roman Empire, then the English, then the Chinese, and then finally the Abbasid, which don't really have landmarks other than the House of Wisdom, but we'll talk a little bit about that. All right, well, let's get into it. We're going to be starting off with the French. Get your timers out, ladies and gentlemen, because here we go. I hope you guys are ready. All right, so I've got my timer right here. I've also got a volume mixer. Let's turn that down. We don't need that. All right, here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. The race starts in three, two, one. Let's go. So the very first landmark that we're going to be talking about is the Chamber of Commerce unique to the French acts as a market. All traders and trade ships return 30% more resources to any market or dock. If you're playing the French on a water map, this is the landmark that you want to be going for. Trade ships are already incredibly strong, but this gives them 30% more resources, so incredibly strong. Another thing that uh, that is important for this landmark is that it acts as a market, so you don't have to invest the 100 wood to actually make the landmark. So it can be incredibly strong on maps like French Pass, I think it's called, or French... French mountains, I'm, I'm not sure exactly what it's called, but essentially there are trading posts in the corner of the map and you can go and place this down along the edge of the map and you can have it as a market. Now, keep in mind, that is going to be your very first landmark that you can look at. The second landmark, let's hit that timer, 51 seconds. Let's move on to the second one. It's the School of Cavalry, unique to the French, acts as a stable. All of your stables produce units 20% faster. This is going to be your go-to landmark in pretty much every single game that's on land or even like half on land, even if you're not going archers, or sorry, even if you're not going cavalry and you want to go archers or something like that, you're still going to go this. Why? Because it's got an incredibly good bonus. 20% production speed is insanity. In addition to that, then you kind of put your opponent, if, if you're going, let's say you're going archers, your opponent is looking at you and they're like, okay, well, you open school of cavalry. I'm going to prepare some spearmen in defense. Bam, bam, wrong move. Because you, my friend, have opened up with the school of cavalry. So that's going to give you a significant bonus there. It also, so not only acting as a stable, but obviously gets the 20% bonus. You can combine this later with, I think it's the 25% bonus from, I was going to call it the engineering bay from the blacksmith to really start stacking that up. All right, that is the timer right there. Hit it. Let's move down onto the next one. It is the Royal Institute. The Royal Institute houses all technologies unique to the French. Research is 20% cheaper here and ignores age requirements. Ignores age requirement is a really, really big one. It's going to be hard for me to try and explain, explain it. So I'll do my best here. You can see all the unique techs that are in here. We've got crossbow stirrups. You've got gambesons. You've got chivalry canted sandals and one of the big things is you've got royal bloodlines this is unique to the french instead of them getting an imperial tech that does 30 percent health they get one that does 35 percent which makes it unique and subsequently able to get in the third age really really big the royal institute is definitely one of my favorite landmarks when it comes to um what's the best way to say it when it comes to uh doing a timing push or, or using cavalry uh, as effective it also has enlistment incentives uh which we're I don't think we're going to be talking about it here, but in one of the best bonuses in the game. Let's move on to the next landmark. That's time. All right. Next landmark is the Guild Hall. The Guild Hall, unique to the French, generates and stores resources over time. The more resources stored, the faster they are generated. Select between food, wood, stone, or gold. So this is not based on your stockpile. It's not based on how many resources you have got in your bank. It has its own separate bank, and it puts those resources into that bank over time. Let's make sure we got that timer up there. Speaking of time. So 
you'll start off and it will generate 20 resources in 20 seconds and then it will begin to speed up and it really starts going very quickly. I think it starts getting up to like 200 resources a second when it's over like 2000. So you've really got to choose when you want to use it. Personally, I'm a big fan of this. I love building the guild hall and just put it straight onto stone. And then eventually I'm going to need a castle, right? Or a keep. Bam. Hit that button. 800 stone in the back pocket. Easy peasy. That's time. Let's move on to the next one. 53 seconds. Not too bad. Next one is the red palace. Acts as a keep. Features high damage arbalist emplacements. Each garrison unit adds an additional arbalist. This is, in my opinion, the best defensive landmark in the game. It is insane. This thing is a machine gun. It is literally a Gatling gun. It melts everything. It is crazy. You put rams underneath this, it is going to melt through them. You put anything underneath this, it absolutely shreds them. You put, like, th this is just the arbiter of safeness in your base. You get this bad boy out, no one is coming near it. The, the high damage arbalist emplacements are really what makes it crazy because you can just put 15 villagers in there and it's like brrr, with the arbalist shots. It does so much damage. It's crazy. I, I feel like it's got to be nerfed. It's that good. But anyway, that's time. Let's move on to the next one. How long did we go on that one? 52 seconds. Not too bad. Next one is College of Artillery. It provides immediate access to produce royal artillery, which do 20% more damage. That is indeed correct. But one of the things to note is that the French in their siege workshop do not have access to the culverin. However, in their College of Artillery, they have access to the Royal Culverin. This is another huge landmark for the French and just one of the reasons why they are a top civilization. They have got absolutely everything going for them. And the Royal Culver Culverin is just one of those things. So in addition to, you know, Royal Cannon, Royal Culverin, you don't want to make these things. These are absolutely terrible. Don't even waste your time. Royal Cal Cannon, uh, incredibly strong, already does that 20% damage bonus that we talked about royal culverin that's how you get access to the culverin as a french so in team games especially you're going to want to be going for this an incredibly strong landmark as well so make sure you do it that's time let's move on to the next civilization which is going to be the rus 52 seconds on that one as well i think all right let's go over to the rus here we go landmark the first one we're going to be looking at is the kremlin so the kremlin acts as a wooden fortress that comes with arrow slits castle turret and castle watch technology so these are all upgrades that you would normally be able to get or, or have rather on the wooden fortress you can see see here castle turret castle watch and then arrow slit so you would get all of these by default on the kremlin keep in mind in addition to that the kremlin or the the uh, output the wooden fortress gives up that or gives that buff to all of the lumber camps in its surrounding region so a really strong landmark here it's a bit of an economic one a bit of an a, a defensive one definitely a, a favorable landmark that's time let's move on to the next one 42 seconds pretty good there drongo golden gate is the next one this is a more interesting landmark an economic landmark allows the exchange of resources at a favorable rate generates an additional exchange every minute so it is capped one exchange or one favorable exchange every minute uh, i don't think it actually acts as a market so i think you would have to make a market if you did want to do exchanges outside of it uh, but essentially it gives you a ticket every minute or an additional exchange every minute and then you can trade 100 resources of whatever you like for 150 of something else really strong economic landmark when it comes to uh team games i think the golden gate is going to be the way to go kremlin is very strong in one versus one though it's it's great as a combination of uh economic uh, and uh and military where golden gate really just focuses on economy that's time 45 seconds not too bad all right let's move on to the next landmarks the high trade house generates gold like a hunting cabin with the value increased by 200 percent so if you're wondering exactly what that is if we go up to the hunting cabin right here where is she here she is so it generates gold based on the number of nearby trees gold rate decreased by nearby hunting cabins so you want to put this bad boy near some trees and then it spawns a deer every 60 seconds so deers have one of the highest food gather rates in the game and this thing spawns a deer every 60 seconds so you can literally just get five six villagers stick them over near your high trade house and for the rest of the game they're just going to be getting the highest effective gather rate so a really strong uh an, an incredibly strong uh building which means that you don't have to make farms potentially you know seven or eight farms potentially you would have to make that to get the equivalent food income you don't have to do that so a very nice economic uh, landmark there that's time let's move on to the next one 55 seconds not too bad abbey of the trinity acts as a monastery can produce warrior monks at half the cost and contains unique religious technologies this landmark is incredibly good if you can get up to the third age ahead of your enemy because the idea is you want to be getting out on the map and get or take advantage of having the abbey of the trinity 
and subsequently using your warrior monks to get out onto the map and take those relics as quickly as possible. Warrior monks are very strong and, and having the Abbey of the Trinity really helps out. And it's a difficult question when it comes to choosing between the High Trade House or the Abbey of the Trinity. It's got, uh, or it houses the unique uh, religious technologies. Um, as far as I'm aware, I think that these technologies are actually available. So you can see we've got Improved, bless uh, improved Blessing, saints reach but in the monastery uh they they don't actually have that it's only the blessing duration so if you do want to get those two uh improved technique or improved uh, uh technologies you uh, the unique technologies rather you will need to build this all right that's time let's move on oh a minute and oh uh, we'll, we'll we'll say that's okay I, I stumbled a little bit i fumbled with some of my words so we'll allow that right one we'll, we'll allow that all right spaskaya tower is the fourth age landmark so it acts as a keep with all emplacements already in place and with increased health. Personally, I'm not too big of a fan of this one. It does have all the emplacements in place, so it's got things like, uh, if we take a look at the keep, it's, it's got the cannon emplacement, the springhold emplacement. Uh, it, it's ready to go. But, uh, you know, it, it, it's still nowhere near as strong as some of the other Age 4 defensive landmarks that we see for, like, the French as an example. It's got increased health, but really that just means it stays alive a little bit longer to trebuchets. It still keeps us strong in Age of Empires 4, but... It it's j definitely doesn't hit the mark as much as I would like it to. That's time. Let's move on to the next one. That's 46 seconds. High Armory is next. Decrease the cost of engines, siege engines rather, in nearby siege workshops by 20%. Contains unique siege engine technologies. So that's really what is, is so big about the High Armory. The fact that it's got those unique technologies. So just taking a look at them. Wandering Town, ram damage increased by 100%. You love to see that in the late game. Siege, crew, training, uh, setup and teardown of... Uh, trebuchets and mangonels is instant a really really big one as well fine-tuned guns reduces the reload time of bombards by 25 percent that is the big attraction right there and then finally banded guns increase the range of spring isles by 1.5 tiles now keep in mind spring have already got a range increase you can see there's the spring uh with roller shutter trigger so it increases the range by plus two tiles so now you can get even further so definitely my go-to when it comes to uh the late game the high armory that's time uh, 50 seconds, not too bad. All right, let's move on to the next civilization, and it is the Mongols. All right, um, you are going to be absolutely hating this civilization when it comes to ranked. They are incredibly strong. So let's take a look at what they've got. Deer Stones. When set up, Deer Stones provide the Yam Speed Aura. Upon completion, instantly grants the Yam Network Technology. So it's think of it as this giant AOE that gives you increased movement speed. Now, typically, the Yam Speed Aura only applies if I remember correctly, to traders and to cavalry. However, the YAM network technology extends this to all units. So you can see the YAM network uh, technology is here. YAM speed aura applies to all units instead of just traders and cavalry units. There I go, Drongo just on the money already with his knowledge of the game. You love to see it. So that's deer stones. Uh, this is a, a very common go-to that people will have. I definitely think of this as your standard age up landmark. That's time. Let's move on to the next one. 57 seconds, not too bad, Drongo. You're doing, you're doing well here. You're doing well, son. The next one is the silver tree acts as a market can build traders at or 50 percent faster and at a 50 percent reduced gold cost this in my opinion is the best trading landmark in the game it is such a great landmark because it actually ena enables you to boom with traders in the early game and most other civilizations you're going to want to be leaving it until you've got you know around 80 90 villages your gold starts running out then you can think about traders here you can very effectively uh raid your opponent put a lot of pressure on them and at the same time boom behind it and you can get up a serious number of traders the mongols are definitely one of the strongest traders in age of empires 4 and i'm a big fan of the silver tree i think it's an absolutely great landmark and any map that's got a land or a uh, trading post in the corner i will definitely be taking the silver tree that's time let's go for the next one 54 seconds stronger you are so good at this next one up is kurultai kurultai when the khan is nearby the kurultai heals all nearby damaged units and provides a 25 percent damage bonus for 30 seconds this is a massive bonus 30 or uh, 25 percent for 30 seconds that's as long as a team uh, as long as a team fight i was going to say as long as a fight when you're playing age of empires 4 typically your khan is going to be with your army if you're defending or even if you're attacking you can take the kurul tie with you and go and attack your enemy put the kurul tie down and get that bonus now i don't know exactly how the heal works i'm not sure the way that it interacts with the Khan and whether it's a, a button that you click to get the bonus. But nonetheless, 25% is nothing to sniff at, especially when it's 30 seconds. Absolutely huge. That's time. 44 seconds, not too bad. All right, next one up is the Step Redoubt. 
probably one of the best landmarks uh, that the that uh, these guys have got access to, the Mongols have got access to. Acts as a Gur, gold dropped off at this landmark is increased by 50%. So that's not taking 50% of the gold out of the gold mine. That's just giving you an extra 50% out of midair. You, ta you mine 10 gold, you get 15 gold. It essentially just gives you an extra 50% gold for the rest of the game. It's incredibly strong. Keep in mind, you're not going to want to stack this with something like deer, or with uh, the silver tree. You want to stack it with deer stones. Because if you're going silver tree, a lot of your gold is going to be coming already in from traders. So it wouldn't make sense to go step readout. So only use this if you're really thinking about deer stones in the early game. That's time. 50 seconds. Not too bad there, Drongo. Next one up, it's the white stupor. The white stupor acts as an uvu and produces 240 stone per minute without a stone outcropping. This is the only way you can actually improve how much uh, stone you get in the game. You can't obtain it from any trades from teammates. You can't buy it off the market. You can, there's there's no way for you to do it other than through your Uvu and through the White Stupor. I'm a big fan of this because when it, once it gets to the late game, you're really going to be needing to get a lot of upgrades. And so that's essentially what this helps you out with. In addition to that, once you've got all your upgrades, it's going to continue giving you 240 stone per minute for the rest of the game. So an incredibly strong, strong landmark that um, enables you to continue getting those upgrades at an accelerated rate as well. All right, that's time. 44 seconds, not too bad. The Kaganet Palace. Let's take a look and see what we've got. We've got spawns a cavalry army of horsemen, Magadai, and lancers, or lancers rather, every 90 seconds. Now, I'll be honest with you guys, I haven't actually looked at this one in practice, but I can assure you that when it comes to the viability of this, I can almost guarantee you that the White Stupor is going to be the viable option, unless that is like a, a, quite literally an army. Uh, a horsemen, Magadai, or lancers. Um, the reason why I think uh, th that this just isn't going to be as viable as the White Stupor, simply just because it is a uh, th your stone is a finite resource okay but food which all of these units cost gold which you're going to obtain from traders those are infinite resources so that's why i think the white stupor is just so much stronger than the kaganet palace and i think it's going to be rare that you actually see it that's time for the mongols 50 seconds not too bad let's move on to the next civilization which is the delhi sultanate all right the delhi sultanate let's take a look at their first two landmarks the first one is the Tower of Victory. Let's make sure we get our timer up on the screen. We'll call it uh, 15, 50, 1545. Let's go. Tower of Victory. Melee and ranged infantry who move near this landmark permanently gain about 15% attack speed. I love the way that that's worded. It's not 15% exactly. It's about 15%. Who knows what it really is? Uh, so I've made a couple of suggestions on how to improve this, but I definitely think this is underused, underutilized. 15% attack speed is significant, but it's not a huge thing it's not 15 percent damage definitely um and so as a consequence it's not as strong as it should or could be and i don't think it's strong enough to really be made of made viable because first and foremost it affects infantry only it's melee and ranged infantry so that definitely you know that's a bonus uh the, the uh the delhi have got access to a number of different infantry units but the primary one that you're going to be using is the men at arms uh, i want to say the men at arms equivalent no it's just the men at arms that they've got access to uh so it does affect them significantly, it gives them extra attack speed. But other than that, it's very rare. Obviously, it affects archers as well, but it's just nowhere near as strong as the next one because that's time. Let's move on to... It says 1 minute 12. It's not really. We, we were doing other things. Dome of the Faith uh, produces scholars at 50% cost from the landmark. In almost all circumstances, Dome of the Faith is the go-to landmark, at least in early Delhi gameplay that we've seen so far. Scholars are a... Um, almost a mandatory part of playing Delhi. Let's take a look and see if we can find it. Here we go. Mosque in age one costs 100 wood. Trains the scholar 150 gold. So you're going to be reducing the cost of that down to 75 gold. That is incredible when you think about just how little that costs as a result. So Dome of the Faith is definitely the way that most people have been going at this stage. Personally, I'm a big fan of it. I think it's great, but we'll see how the meta trends. The, tr the meta may trend more towards Tower of Victory combined with, you know, early aggression. That is something that we could potentially see. So something to keep an eye out for. That's time. Let's move on to the next landmarks. 49 seconds. Not too bad. It's Compound of the Defender. Infantry units can build stone walls, gates, and towers. Reduces the stone cost of buildings and their emplacements by 25%. Now, keep in mind that does affect the keep. So your keep is now reduced from 800 stone down to 600 stone. So a very nice reduction there. Infantry can also build stone walls, gates, and towers. It means that you don't have to occupy your villages. It means that your infantry can actually go out and do something. So if you're playing a heavy infantry-based game, let's say you go Tower of Faith or Tower of Victory, you could combine it with Compound of the Defender. And now you've got an ability 
to build stone walls without necessarily using your villages. So I think this is an interesting landmark, a curious one, no significant bonus immediately. And it's one that definitely goes over game over the game. It's difficult to gauge exactly how strong it would be, uh, but I'm curious to see how the meta evolves for it. That's time. Let's move on to the next one. 53 seconds. It's the house of learning grants no immediate bonus other than advancing to the next age thank you, but contains many unique economic and religious technologies. You know, you probably could have just gone with contains unique economic and religious technologies. I feel like that probably would have been better. Anyway, let's take a look and see what they've got. So we've got reinforced foundations. It's a an increase of five maximum population for houses and town centers. So houses and town centers go from 10 to 15. Not too bad. Takes 25 seconds to research. We've got tranquil venue. Uh, mosques restore one health to nearby friendly units every second. Not too bad at all. Lookout Towers. Increase the site range of outposts by 50%. I love this. Uh, this is a re really, really, really cool tech. Uh, heavy, hardy Rations. Increase the carrying capacity of villages by plus five. Now, keep in mind, that's an Imperial Age tech. So it's basically a second wheel bar upgrade. And then finally, Honed Blades. Increases the melee damage of men at arms and knights by three. A very, very strong upgrade as well. So House of the Learning is definitely one of those... Uh, I think people tend to opt towards the House of Learning a lot more than they would the compound of the Defender, but I'm curious to see how the meta evolves with that one. That's time. A minute and four seconds. I think that's the first time we've really gone over. So uh, apologies to everybody who was keeping count. Let's move on to the next one. Hysar Academy. Generates or constantly generates food based on number of technologies research. Now, I don't actually know where the break point is for the Hisar Academy. I've got a somebody, uh, a moderator for me who's a very passionate about the deli. I'm going to try and seek to find out with him exactly where it pays off. But when it comes to viability, I don't think it, it really even gets close to the second wonder, which we'll just call it time there because the Hussar Academy, just to, to summarize, okay, food is an infinite resource. You have access to farms. So you don't need food generated based on the number of technologies research. Sure, you could have a thousand food a second, but at the end of the game or at the end of the day, you, you've already got farms that exist for that purpose. So it just becomes a bit redundant. Anyway, let's move on to the next one. 52 seconds, not too bad. Palace of the Sultan automatically produces tower war elephants, garrison up to four scholars in the landmark to increase production speed. So we've already talked about the synergy that it can occur with scholars and the potential of Dome of the Faith. So you can further combine Dome of the Faith, the Dome of the Faith with the Palace of the Sultan to give you those four scholars for reduced cost, of course, uh, and to produce tower war elephants automa automatically so let's take a look at the tower war, war elephants uh they are 400 food 600 gold this is your go-to why because when it gets to the late game you don't want to be spending 600 gold on a tower war elephant you want to be getting that for free and so if you can get that for free that's imp that that is awesome that is great because that's 600 free gold 600 gold you don't have to worry about 600 gold that you don't have to mine and tower war elephants are incredibly strong they're probably the strongest elephant that there is um, they, they are the Archer Tower Wall Elephant. I'll hover over it once again for you guys. Tower Wall Elephant. There you guys go. High health, mountain with m powerful archers, capable of attacking stone walls, slow movement, Siege Elephant. Upgrades Tower Wall Elephants to have elite crossbowmen as riders instead of archers. So you can see that you can get some cool upgrades for them. But anyway, that's time. Let's move on a little bit longer with the Delhi guys. So let's now move on to the next civilization, which is going to be the Holy Roman Empire. You guys will have played with these highly likely before. Let's take a look and see what we've got. We've got the Mindwork Palace, acts like a blacksmith. Technology research here costs 25% less. This is a landmark where that, that keeps giving for the rest of the game. Uh, you've got a lot of potential, um, a lot of potential upgrades that are in here. And as a result, it once you even reach the Imperial Age, it's still going to be giving you that reward. 25% less over the entire game. It really pays off. But one of the things that we see happening with the Mindwork Palace, people going for those early attacks. That way you don't have to invest that 150 wood in the blacksmith. So a really, really nice landmark here can be tied together with that. Let's call it time. 43 seconds. The Arkan Chapel inspires units in a large radius. So long as the prelate is garrisoned, this is probably the, the standard go-to, the Arkan Chapel. The more and more we're seeing, it's, it's the go-to. Just simply because it enables you to buff up an entire wood line for the early game. It enables you for the late game to have your all of your farms or your mills uh, buffed up. Also, you can probably get a gold or a stone mine in there as well. So it's going to buff those up. But there's a potential for you to be buffing up between 30 and 40 villages most of the, the, the rest of the game very easily. Um, if you can bring it in close to your town center as well, you can also be buffing up your sheep gatherers in the early game. So very, very strong. Uh, landmark and and the go-to for most situations i would suspect that's 45 seconds not too bad on, on to 23 minutes now let's keep having a look all right the regnitz cathedral 
This landmark is, uh, so relics placed within the Regnitz Cathedral generates 200% gold every minute, holds three relics. This landmark is probably one of the best landmarks in the game. When it comes to a landmark tier list, which I'm sure you guys are probably going to want. We're not going to do that right now. We'll do that later. Th this is an S tier. This is 100% an S tier landmark. This is insane. It is just absolute insanity. If you can get to the castle age before your enemy, you can use your prelates, which you've already created in the first age, and then you can subsequently go and pick up those relics and put them inside to get you 900 gold a minute. You never have to think about gold again. That's so much gold. That is so much gold. I think someone did the math that worked out to be like 13 stables or something like that, producing units. It's 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 it is so much gold. It, it's crazy how good this landmark is. If your enemy is in the second age and you're about to click up to the third age and you spot that that um, you know they haven't aged up yet, go for the Regnitz Cathedral, put some relics in there, and you'll never look back. It is a great landmark. That's time. A minute and nine. Oh, getting getting worse the longer this video goes on, Drongo. Burgrave Palace. Acts as a barracks that produces infantry five at a time. If you come from Age of Empires 3, you will know all about batch training. In Age of Empires 4, though, it is something that is rare to see. You only really see it with the Mongols or here with the Holy Roman Empire. So instead of having five barracks, you just have a single Burgrave Palace, which is five barracks. Now, keep in mind, when you have a Burgrave Palace, that you're not going to be able to train units one by one. You have to train them as a group. So it means that you need the resources for all of those units at the same time. Then you can train them. It's still very strong though, because it means that you're able to dump resources into it once it gets in, into the mid game or the late game. It's essentially 750 wood that you don't have to think about. So think of the 1800 resources that you spent to age up minus 750 wood. That's a, it's a barracks. And you're going to be making, you're probably going to be making men at arms for most of the game. You've got so many good upgrades for them. Uh, the primary upgrade that I'm thinking of here is in the blacksmith. Smith, it is marching drills. Increases the movement speed of infantry by 10%. A really, really good upgrade. All right, that's time. Minute and three, not too bad. We get, we're, we're getting closer, we're getting closer. All right, the Palace of Swabia. Palace of Swabia acts as a town center. Produces villages 75% faster and 75% cheaper. Cost to build this landmark is reduced by 20%. Another incredible landmark here for the Holy Roman Empire. If you are behind, this is the landmark to go for. It's basically four town centers. Think about that. 75% faster, 75% cheaper. Uh, hold on, I'm, I'm just going to have to do the math, but I'm, I'm pretty sure, I, I don't know if the, the if, if it's correct, but I, I'm 99% sure it reduces villager train time from 20 seconds down to 5 seconds. I, I'm 99% sure. I think that's probably worded incorrectly. It'd be better to say something like reduces villager train time by 75%. Unless they've changed it. They may have changed it. I'm, I'm not too sure. Uh, but, uh, it, it is definitely an insane landmark. Let's take a look. Oh, before we do that, let's, uh, let's call time. 52 seconds. Ellsback Palace. Axe is a keep with 50% increased health. All buildings with influence take 33% less damage. This is another incredible landmark. The Holy Roman Empire have got such amazing landmarks, really. Like, I could take every single landmark out of this civilization and put it in another civilization, and it would feel great in there. This is another one. It The, the fact that it provides that influence bonus, the 33% less damage, and then you can combine that already with their influence bonus, which is uh, Army of the Empire. Is it this one? Religious Zeal? Influence here. Buildings constructed within the influence of a town center or keep gain the emergency repairs ability, which can be activated to repair the building. So now, not only is your units, or your buildings rather, taking 33% less damage, you can also heal them as well. It's it's a really, really strong landmark and enables a lot of staying power. All right, 50 seconds, not too bad. Let's move on to the next civilization, which is going to be the English. All right, here they come, the English. The very first one is going to be the council hall. You guys would have seen this a million times, the council hall. Because really, that's the only viable option for the English in the first age. I'd love to be more kind to the Abbey of Kings, but unfortunately, it's all about the Council Hall here. So this axe, it produces long, longbowmen at plus 100% speed from the landmark, contains longbowmen upgrades. So the uh, essentially double speed training longbow, so it acts as two archery ranges. So think about it as, you know, plus 300 wood in the early game, which is just so insane. This is another S tier landmark. Like, it's, it's just crazy good. Uh, even if you don't want to go longbows to open with, you can open with a stable, still make the council hall. It's just that good. It is just that good. Uh, but all, all the upgrades are in there. It, it synergizes incredibly well with all the bonuses that the English get with their longbowmen, the way that their, uh, their uh, network of castles works, which is their influence bonus, which is a 15% uh, faster. Um, sorry, where is it? 15%? Uh, where are we? Network of castles. 25% uh, faster firing rate. So it, it synergizes very well with that. So incredibly strong landmark. That was time a minute and eight seconds. A little bit too long. That's okay. 
Abbey of Kings heals all nearby friendly units that are out of combat by plus four every 1.5 seconds. <laughs> so they have to be nearby, they have to be out of combat, and then it's not even plus four every second, it's plus four every 1.5 seconds. It's, um, okay, so let's talk about why this isn't the best. So typically as an English player, you're going to want to be going longbowmen. Lo longbow are very, very strong. Uh, they're a great, you know, uh, component to the, mo to the majority of your army. You always want to be including them at, at some point. Council Hall obviously makes longbows. In addition to that, you also have the setup camp, which is available, which uh, longbowmen gain the ability to set up camp, which heals them for one health every one second. So the, it kind of like the, that technology, which isn't unique to the Council Hall, that's available in the archery range as well. So this technology nullifies the Abbey of Kings for the longbowmen. And so it just doesn't really make sense to be, you know, making longbowmen and, and going for the Abbey of Kings. I think maybe if you want to play cavalry, then maybe this landmark could work. But that's about it. I can't think of many situations you'd want to include this. But anyway, that's time. Let's move on over to the next. Another 100, 108. I don't think we've gone more than 108. Is this Drongo explains every landmark in 69 seconds or less? I think it might be. I don't think we've got, have we gone over 60? Oh no, there's, an, there's 69. <laughs> Damn, that would have been, that would have been nice. All right, let's move on to the next one. It's the King's Palace. Acts as the town center with all the behaviors, technologies, units, and bonuses. Really, really good landmark. Uh, town centers are incredibly expensive. 300 uh, stone, 400 wood. Let's take a look if we can spot the town center. There it is. 400 wood, 300 stone. Take two minutes to build as well. And the King's Palace gives it to you for free. Uh, obviously, it allows you to train villagers. So it's really, really good if you think you might be able to get, you know, up to the third age without getting punished. King's Palace is definitely the go-to. Uh, it, it's just, it's an all-round incredibly strong landmark because you can garrison in the town center, use it as that uh, defensive point as well. Uh, it, it shoots arrows, it combines already with things like, uh, let's see if we can find it. Um, it it's essentially, oh here, town centers have fire twice as many arrows. So already it's like, it, it combines with that and then it extends out your influence already with your... Um, your network of castles. So there's just so much that's going on and why this is such a great landmark. But let's move on to the next one. Let's call that time. And wow, a minute 17. Well, that was a bit crazy. All right, the next one is the White Tower. Acts as a keep with all the bonuses, technology and bonuses. This is another great landmark. This is probably the landmark you want to go to if you think you might get hit with a timing push. It, it's, it's a keep. It's a castle. If your opponent spots this, that's, you know, there's no two ways about it. They've, they have got to back out because, you know, if, if you've got a... a you know, boiling oil that you can pour on your enemy. They're not even going to be able to get rams under there. So they're almost 100% just going to have to back out. A very, very strong defensive castle. Probably one of my favorite landmarks in the game, the White Tower. It is just, it's so versatile. Uh, the unique tech that you can see that's available here, Network of Citadels, it's available at all keeps. It's not just at the White Castle. You can see it here, so it doubles the Network of Castles attack speed uh, from 25 to 50%. So yeah, d don't think of uh, of you having to get that. You're not missing out on anything, but it, it's a keep and a keep is expensive as well. Um, and uh, an incredibly strong landmark. Let's call it time on that one. 56 seconds, not too bad. Let's move on to the age four landmarks. Now, I know I'm going to pronounce this, pronounce this correctly. It looks like Berkshire to me, but I'm pretty sure it's like Berkshire. So it, it's got a weird pronunciation. I apologize. I know there's going to be a bunch of guys from England that are in, in the comments saying, hey, Drongo, that's not how you pronounce that. I know I've got it wrong. I'm sorry. I'll try and get it right next time, all right? This time, uh, this time I'll get it wrong. Okay, so it acts as a keep with all the behaviors, technologies, and bonuses. Berkshire Palace has 50% greater weapon range and double the number of arrow slits. So it number of, doubles the number of arrow slits, so it fires more arrows already. Combine that with the network of castle bonus, and this thing just shoots arrows, like, for days. And then 50% greater weapon range as well. So you can get upgrades on this bad boy. So you can get the springled emplacement, the cannon emplacement. And this guy, uh, th they go further. So th it's a very, very defensive landmark. I don't think, I think it still gets outranged by trebuchets, but it can it can hit bombards though. So really, really strong landmark. We'll call that time. 57 seconds, not too bad. The Wingard Palace. Uh, it is producing the Wingard army from the landmark. Army includes one each of the men at arms, spearmen, longbowmen, knight, and trebuchet. Uh, I, I really like this landmark as well, uh, primarily because it gives you the trebuchet, so it gives you a source of siege throughout the game. Also gives you the knight and the men at arms, which are both units that cost gold, and that's something that is going to become rarer the longer the game goes on. So the fact that it's going to be trickling those units into you, uh, it, it's a, a really nice landmark, uh, especially because for the English, like, uh, 
the difference between this one and the Mongol one, the Mongols have access to a lot of gold through trading and through their already existent landmark in the Third Age, whereas the English, they only really have access to the uh, to coin, or rather to gold, through their upgrade at the mill, uh, which is enclosures right here, and that's not a whole lot of gold uh, that is getting generated from that. So as a result, I do think the Wingard Palace is quite good. That's time. 59 seconds, not too bad, Drongo. Now let's move on to the next civilization. It's the Chinese, known for their landmarks. Let's take a look at the Imperial Academy. Nearby buildings generate 100% tax gold. This is a landmark that I would say is rarely used. And the reason why is because tax gold isn't really something that comes into relevance until probably about 15 minutes. After Once you start getting to about you know, 10, 15 minutes, 10 maybe, 15 definitely, then it starts getting relevant. And... With the Chinese, before we get any further, I should mention the Chinese can build both of their landmarks. So if you build the Barbican of the Sun, you could always come back and build the Imperial Academy at a later date. And so as a result, it's important to remember that when we're going through this, okay? So the Imperial Academy, I, I think it's definitely the weaker out of the two landmarks. It's one that I very rarely use. On water maps, it's, it can be particularly strong, uh, but I, ideally it's one that normally comes a little bit later in the game. Normally, um, I will use this to get into my dynasty. We'll talk more about that in another video, but essentially, if you build both of these two landmarks, you can enter into the Song dynasty. All right, we'll call that time there. A minute and eight, not too bad. Barbican of the Sun fires a long-range hand cannon and adds arrow slits while garrison. Offers vision into stealth forests. This is incredibly strong. Hand cannon. What do we know about the hand cannon? The hand cannon it's like a, it's a much higher damage, a lower rate of fire. So against things that have got high armor, it's very effective. It can pierce through that high armor because it's got a much greater amount of damage and it fires a lot less. If you've got six damage and your enemy's got five armor, you do one damage and you can fire 10 arrows in a second. You're only going to do 10 damage. But if you've got 50 damage and you fire once a second, then versus your enemy who's got, uh, what was it, 5 armor, then you're going to do 45 damage. So it's a significant, uh, what's the word? It's an incentive for your opponent not to attack you. Very great at protecting your gold in the early game. One of my favorite landmarks as well. I think this is a really, really good one. Also, you can garrison villages in there as well, up to 10. So plenty of space in there for all those naughty little villages. Let's call it time a minute and two. Not too bad. All right, moving on. It's the astronomical clock tower. Acts as a siege workshop and produces siege weapons with 50% extra health. That's huge. That is absolutely massive. When you're talking about the mechanics of the late game and the interactions of siege and how they work all with each other, let's go take a look at them. Springled, Nest of Bees, Counterweight Trebuchet, The Bombard. All of these numbers have all been worked out very specifically. And then the astronomical clock tower comes out and it's like, huh, I've actually got 50% more health. It's almost, you know, it's so much harder to now kill anything that comes out of this. And you can combine with the astronomical clock tower, you can combine, uh, where is she? Over here, town center. It is an imperial official. So it, if you can task an imperial official, which you can, uh, it's a support unit. If you can task it to supervise your uh, astronomical clock tower, it can train artillery or siege. I think it's three times as fast. I want to say three times as fast. Three times as fast. That's the, I'm going with three times as fast. It's crazy. Because now you essentially have three siege workshops all producing units with 50% more health. That's crazy. All right, we'll call it time there. 118. Gosh, I think I got a little bit too crazy in that one. All right, next one up is the Imperial Palace. One of my favorite landmarks. It is known as the Legal Map Hack Landmark. Has a large site radius. So you see a giant site radius around your base. Activate to view location of enemy villages for 10 seconds. So this is, this really plays into a certain style of play. Uh, for me, that's the fast castle. If I'm going for a fast castle, I always go to the Imperial Palace. I go straight into uh, Lancers and then I'm attacking enemy villages. I'm using the Imperial Palace to find those villages, to locate where they are. It's a great landmark to just give you that little bit of information that you might be needing. I've used it many times in the games that I've played. Great on water maps as well. You don't know if your enemy's expanded to the middle islands yet or to the side islands. Bam, use it. Easy to see. So really, really nice landmark here. Uh, definitely one of my favorites. All right, 51 seconds, not too bad. Let's take a look at the fourth age landmarks. We've got the Great Wall Gatehouse. Must be built over stone walls. Increases the health of stone walls and gates by 100%. Nearby troops on walls deal plus 50% damage. 
This obviously plays into a certain playstyle as well, the Great Wall Gatehouse. It's more of a defensive landmark, and if I'll be honest with you, it's one that I rarely use. I don't feel a lot of use coming out of this landmark, just primarily because I don't really use walls a lot. I feel like walls can definitely take uh, take a toll on your enemy, definitely, but I feel like they're more of just a hindrance, uh, and, and they don't really prevent a, a, a huge amount from happening, but... Nonetheless, don't let that get you down. It's still a good landmark. I, I just definitely wouldn't be putting it in S tier. Speaking of S tier, though, let's move on to the next one. 48 seconds, not too bad. It's Spirit Way. All buildings can create previously achieved dynasty units. So keep in mind, when you move on to a dynasty, so let's say you've moved up from the Yuan dynasty and you go up to the Ming dynasty, you can now access the Grenadier. You see unique unit, but you lose access to the Yuan dynasty, which had the Fire Lancer. But now, when you create the Spirit Way, you can now access those previously achieved Dynasty units. Buildings near this landmark produce Dynasty units at 30% cost. This is really, really good for the late game when you're going to be spamming out your unique archers. So if we go have a look at the archery range, where are you? There she is. The truck or no. It fires bolts with a ferocious damage potential against enemy units. High rate of fire, ineffective versus armored targets. You're going to be using these guys all the time. They do so much damage when it comes to the late game. And you can reduce the cost down by 30%. That's massive. Now, keep in mind, the AoE isn't that big around it. I think it works out to be about 12, I think. 12 um, archery ranges can fit around it if you do it perfectly, if you've got enough space. But outside that, you're not going to be able to get that reduced cost. And obviously, it doesn't affect normal units. It's only the the uh, the unique dynasty units. All right. Oh, no. I just reset it. That was the wrong button. I think we would have been over there anyway. So it was, it was kind of like I was cheating a little bit there anyway. All right. Let's move on to the next one. What do we got? We've got the Abbasid coming up. Oh, it's, never mind. It's the final one. And we don't have many landmarks to talk about here. You, you guys want to know why? They've only got one. It's the House of Wisdom. Contains civilization technology for the Abbasid dynasty. Abbasid advances in ages through the House of Wisdom, constructs wings to advance to the next age and gain additional technology. So let's take a look. You can see they've got no other landmarks that they've got access to. They've got this guy, guy down here, the Prayer Hall of Ukba, but that is a wonder. That's not a landmark. But you know what? I think we can talk a little bit about the Culture Wing and the Economic Wing and the Military Wing and the Trade Wing. We're going to go into a great amount of detail in other videos about this, but I'll talk a little bit briefly about this. We'll, get, we'll do a minute for each one of these. How, how does that sound? Let's do it. All right, we're at 45 seconds. Let's go the Culture Wing. Culture Wing is a great standard opening for maps where maybe you're going to be on water uh, preservation of knowledge is a minus 30 percent cost for all technologies throughout the game so you've got to research this and then it's 30 percent cost reduction another um great uh research that they've got in here is faith i'm not a big fan of medical centers i'll, I'll hover over it so you can see uh, imams can convert units without holding a relic but can only target a single unit so re really nice basically takes it back to age of empires 2 style uh, i'm a big fan of the culture wing i go for it a lot um, but uh, when it comes to, you know, uh, how often you see it, I would probably say in about 40 to 50% of my games. Compare that to the economic wing, which is going to be a lot higher than that. So your fresh food stuffs, you'll be very familiar with this. Reduces the cost to produce villages by 50%. That is a huge amount. And it means that you can sustain villager production for a much greater amount of town centers and time with this. This The economic wing is my go-to. On any land map, this is my go-to. Uh, if, as long as I'm not making fishing boats, because if I'm making fishing boats, I'm probably going to not be making too many town centers. So if it's a land map, I'm almost always going to be going the economic wing. Uh, they've also got access to agriculture, improves the gather rate of farms by 15%, improved processing, villagers drop off 8% more resources. We've already talked about how strong this can be for the Mongols as an example. They get 50% more resources dropped off for gold to that uh, landmark that they have. Here it's 8% for all resources, so a really nice late game buff. Big fan of the economic wing. Military wing, another really, really good wing for the Abbasid dynasty here. So it, the, the big thing here is camel support is definitely one of my favorite technologies in the game. Camels increase the armor of friendly or nearby infantry rather by plus one. This is so big. This is so big when you're in those early fights and you've got archers out. They normally have plus one. Now they've got plus two. It makes them so much harder to kill. Everything just becomes really hard to kill. You can combine this with men at arms which have already got very high armor and make it even higher. I think they get up to like eight armor or something ridiculous with this. It's crazy. You've also got things like camel rider shields, plus three camel uh, uh, melee armor. It's not too bad, but it is a very expensive tech, especially for a fortress age or rather a castle age tech. My apologies, Age of Empires 3 coming out of me there. 
Uh, for a Castle Age tech, it's quite expensive at 700 gold, but uh, it, it's a quite a good tech though, especially a melee armor tech. And then finally, boot camp increases the health of all infantry by 15%. So that is archers as well as just your standard infantry like spears, men at arms, all that good stuff. It increases all of the health. Keep in mind, archers in Age of Empires 4 are considered infantry. And then finally, we've got the trade wing. Trade wing is one that I would only ever go on a water map, and it's one that I would go on a water map in the late game. And the reason why is because of Spice Roads and Grand Bazaar. So let's talk a little bit about that. So Spice Roads increases the gold income from traders by 30%. So at the moment, I think it is bugged for water traders, but for land traders, it's fine. Um, typically, you're going, you don't want to go for this in the early game. If you go for this in the early game, it's going to be a bad idea. And the reason why is because trade is so expensive to invest in and it takes a long time to pay off. Uh, and so ideally, you want to be leaving it until you're in about the mid to late game when you can put down maybe three or four markets and really spump, uh, start pumping out traders. And then at that point, maybe you can even think about going to Imperial with the trade wing, enabling you to get Spice Roads, enabling you to get Grand Bazaar. So traders also return with a secondary resource. This resource is 25% the base gold value and is set at the market. So you get to choose what you want uh, your traders to bring back. We've also got access to armored caravans, plus five armor to traders and trade ships. A nice little upgrade, but nothing too crazy. And then finally, you've got four technologies, which are always available to you. It's only depending on the age that you're in. So the first one is Phalanx, a very curious technology. So increases the attack range of spearmen by 100%. That's pretty big. When you think about your spearmen, the way they stack up when they're attacking, they normally have to fight around each other to hit the enemy. But when you get this upgrade, you can actually attack with two rows of spearmen. So it enables a much greater damage per second with your spearmen. Really cool tech. Next one is camel handling. Increases the movement speed of camels by 15%. Camels are quite slow, uh, especially the camel archer, very slow. So this is definitely something that helps them out a fair bit in the early game. Uh, it is a a uh, castle age technology though in the fourth age you've got camel barding which increases the armor of all camel units by plus two so now you've got plus two and plus uh where is it plus three up here so plus five melee armor for your camel riders and then on top of that the the already plus three that you can get from buffs and i think camel riders if i remember correctly camel riders are actually a light horse uh or they're considered light cavalry and so they don't actually have any base armor. So I'm pretty sure it's plus three, plus, uh, plus three, plus three, and then plus two. So they get a total of eight armor. So not too bad, not too bad. Uh, this essentially just makes them even, uh, the Camel Rider Shields just makes them even to those other uh, knights or lances. And then finally, you've got Composite Bows, which reduces the reload time of archers by 25%. So you get a lot of great archer upgrades for the Abbasid Dynasty when you come to the Imperial Age. You've got composite bows, 25%. You've also got things like boot camp, 15% health. So really, really, really nice um, you know, combinations that you can run here. Anyways, fellas, that's been absolutely every landmark in Age of Empires 4. In less than a minute, I would say, I mean, technically we went over a couple of them, but we did try. I hope that you've enjoyed the video. If you have, make sure you leave a like. If you're watching this on YouTube, the chances are I'm live right now over on Twitch. I'll leave a link down in the, the description. Come say good day, because I'm going to be streaming Age of Empires 4 from, well, right about now until probably like the next, I don't know, next three years, next four years. I don't know. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be hectic. I'll catch you guys then. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.